Is your portfolio stronger than a damn wall? Can you help me fix my printer? When was the last time that you called a plumber? Isn't it time you gifted someone a space marine? Today I'm saying thanks to one of the channel's subscribers. An individual that has been a supporter since day one. So rarely in this hobby do we take a break from our painting schedule to create a gift for someone else, but that's exactly what we're doing today. Strap yourself in as today I paint a huge space marine as a gift for somebody to include as a decoration in their hobby space. Is that somebody you? You're gonna have to watch to find out. McFarlane Toys have made these enormous Space Marine figures that cost less than their 28mm scale counterparts, unpainted so we can design our own scheme. This is a perfect gift idea. Often these models have a mold release agent chemical on them, so remember the best practice is to give them a bath first. Back to the saucy hot tub scene. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. To fill jacuzzis. Pass the exfoliator, brother Rubik's. Does that seem plausible to you? Well, you would be correct again. I've let the model dry overnight and I'm ready to prime. I'm using Wraithbone spray because my armor will have some dark and some light sections, and I don't want the battle of trying to spray whites over black slater. Pro tip number 84. If a passerby or a neighbor happens to see you priming one of your defenders of the Imperium, no stress, just deepen your voice a little, pretend that you have children and seem a little unsure about what is going on. Yeah, g'day Macca, just got one of uh, Tyson's little action dolls. Gonna slap a coat of paint on him and then head upstairs and uh, watch the big game. Masking tape, what am I up to? Well, if you want multiple colors on your marine and you want a sharp separation, then tape is your friend and that's what I'm up to today. One side of the marine will be light and the other dark. Priming with black, I don't want thick coats going on because I still have lots of painting to come. So I'm thinning my paint down and performing a couple of passes, letting the paint dry each time. I want this half of the marine to be black, but if I leave it like this, it's not very exciting. Dark blues are a great option for bringing some life to black armor. Incubi Darkness is my favorite starting point, and I'm spraying this on the raised sections of the Marine's armor where the highlights would be. Stegodon Scale Green is a slight shade brighter, and ignore the fact that it has the word green in the name because it pairs excellently with the blues. This is looking really cool. I don't want to go any brighter at this stage, but I will come back to this section of armor later once I get a feel for the other half. Removing masking tape could be one of my favorite things behind marriage and having kids. Maybe it's behind those things. Tectonic plates aren't crockery, or are they? But don't you find that suspicious? I enjoyed it so much, in fact, that I'm gonna run it back and mask him up again. Now you'll have to trust me here that something is actually occurring because I can't imagine that the camera picks it up very well. But the prime is more of a bone color and now I'm using Vallejo Off-White as my first highlight and I'm following the exact same process as earlier. Next is Arctic White from Vallejo and it's the brightest white I have. By starting with bone colors and ending on a bright white allows me some transition in my white colors rather than just black on one side and bright white on the other with no depth or highlights. Not overly exciting, but I'm blocking out all of the metallic areas with lead belcher. What am I doing again? Nah, I'm making a video to say thanks. So it took around eight or nine months for the channel to reach 1,000 subscribers, and now it's launched to 5,000, which is wild. So I don't know how any of you found me, but thank you for hanging around, bantering back and forth, and encouraging me. Applying a wash to all the metallic with null oil. So the person who I'm painting this model for has no idea. Once the video is up, I'll reach out to you and arrange to post this bad boy across. Okay, now I'm ready to add some of those classic power armor highlights. 
staggered on green mixed with thin Rizian grey and I'm taking my time and painting along the edges of the panels. If I paint every edge then the armour will start to have that Tron look. So instead, confine your efforts to highlight the raised sections. Fenrisian grey on its own as my final highlight, and this looks best in the corners of the highlighted areas. On the other side of the model now, and a bright white in the same style as the blues, and I follow the panel lines. Now I don't actually know how this person paints their own marines, I've just examined the photos and thought I would bring my own spin to it. The white half still needs shadow and depth, but first, a word from this guy. What even are dividends? Can a pizza ever be too big? I like using thin down contrast paints as a glaze to achieve shadows, but I can't remember which one I want for white or cream coloured armour. Let's go with... This one, kill him in flesh. I'm still painting this in the recessed shadow areas like we would with normal wash, but I'm also painting on the lower half of the armor panels. I keep the paint thin and paint down in the direction I want to be darkest and lift the brush there so that most of the paint remains at the darkest end. Take your time, settle in and aim to be neat so that you don't have to come back and correct any mistakes. Ah, I wonder if the individual has twigged yet and is looking at it going, hey, that's kind of how I paint my marines. Darker now, using Katachan flesh and thinly adding this in the recessed shadows. I'm ready to add some serious colour now. The chest symbol needs to be green and I'm starting with Cabalite green as the base. We can pick up the pace a little now. Caliban green as the shadow colour, then I'm mixing some lighter greens into the Cabalite green, like Warpstone Glow and Mook Green. The brightest highlights are achieved by mixing Mook Green and Avalan Sunset Yellow together. I like the silver areas. Enough said. Ugh, patches are boring. Here are some browns I used and crosshatched some of the areas around the edges to make them look a little more worn down. That's enough, let's find something cool. I don't like painting freehand because I'm not good at it. There, I said it. Time to overcome the fear. I'll start basic with a Roman numeral on the knee pad. I've stolen one of my children's pencils and getting what's left of my lush hair in the frame because I'm a pro. Couple of coats of black and that doesn't look awful. A pretty obvious hint now as I paint the custom chapter symbol onto the left shoulder. Oh wait, I can blur the image a little and build some more suspense. Yeah, I like that. Wait, hold up. Then I would have to blur all the remaining painting footage. Yeah, I'm over that. Let's unblur it. So the symbol is some kind of sword in black. The armour has chips and scratches, so to help these symbols fit in a little nicer, I'm going to paint scratches across them from where the enemy has chosen violence over peace. Does this look infected to you? I want the eyes to be glowing rather than painting them as the multiple coloured lenses we normally see on Space Marines. My technique here is pretty straightforward. Off-white as the base coat, and then using Vallejo Fluorescent Green mixed down with thinner, I'm washing this over the eyes. Yep, that'll work. Time to make that plasma glow hot. Using Titanium White Ink from Liquitex and painting this over the plasma coils. When was the last time that you painted a mini for someone else as a surprise or as a gift? Give it a shot. This hasn't taken me long and I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself. Unless, of course, he hates it. Oh lordy. Back to the airbrush and I'm using the same ink, but I'm over spraying the coils and making sure I land the ink across the weapon casing where the light would be cast. Then I'm picking out my color. I've chosen magenta because purple is the accent color that he uses for his marines, and I thought this would be a cool way to introduce it. 
Make sure the one you pick is transparent or semi-transparent so that we are tinting the white underneath and not completely covering it. These work great with an airbrush and are easy to clean out. One of the next videos I put together will include me using various glowing inks on 28mm scale 40k models, so you'll get to see them in more detail there. Ending with painting white ink in between the lower portion of the coils to reintroduce some of that stronger heat, and I think we're ready to call the model complete. Let's take a look. This was no doubt really obvious to the relevant subscriber midway through the video, but I hope that I kept the suspense up at least a little. To Black Sword, thank you so much for all the banter and the encouragement as I launched the channel. I know you don't have that many minis, so I hope this one does find space in your hobby area just to give you some encouragement for your painting and your playing. Hit me up on Instagram and I'll arrange getting this model across to you. To everyone else, thank you so much for the journey, but keep one eye open because I might just be painting a model for you next. If Flashing Badger Painting was going to paint any one particular model for you, which one would it be and why? Almost forgot. Let's end with some final thoughts. Then tell me this. Then why were the cows running?